Listen, here, Gangnam is golden. And in this real estate series, we are covering everything you need to know about real estate with our luxury real estate agent, Anna Arkutun. Listen, I told you I had to bring you back. So and, happy. And, and listen, ooh wee, I got a conversation for y'all oh today. <laughs> There's so many assumptions. There's so many questions I get. And they said, Tim, when you bring somebody on your channel, ask them the hard questions. Okay. So that, and I knew that you are the person for the job. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so we're going to jump straight in. Okay. Number one question I get, why is real estate so expensive in Ghana? Interesting. That's interesting. Um, and I think I've heard a few of those before. Yeah. But um, I'll say that, as I was saying, knowledge is power, right? What do we mean by real estate is expensive in Ghana, okay? Mm -hmm. So we have, are we talking about Accra specifically, like mm -hmm. the prime areas? If we go to other countries, whether it's America or England or Dubai, there's always the capital is always a higher priced area because it's developed, because it's close to the airport. So if you're saying that, oh, maybe I'm living in like in, in America in the state that I'm in, prices are, are like this. Is that the capital? Right. Mm -hmm. So if you're comparing it that way, then that's where you may think that it's expensive. Right. So in Prime Accra, we have um, certain price ranges ranging between 2 million Ghana cities all the way up to 10 million Ghana cities and more. This is 200,000 to about a million dollars and more. This is the prime city. This is where the action is, just like you would find in other countries, right? Yeah. And then you'd go to other parts like um, East Lagoon Hills or Yarifa, even other regions of Ghana where pricing. So, for example, I think where I was talking to, telling you there's a, a development coming up at East Lagoon Hills, a lovely three-bedroom, and I think the pricing is about 840,000 Ghana cities or $84,000, wow. right? Right. Yeah. And this is a three bedroom. So, and that's a good price, right? So you, we have to be very intentional and aware of the comparisons we are making and why we say it's expensive. I don't know if you get what I mean. Everybody no, no, I, I, I get what you're saying because I believe the question comes from the perspective that if I'm coming to Africa, mm -hmm. things should be cheap. Mm -hmm. And the reality is we're not going to go too far into the economy and stuff like that. The, the truth is there's a big difference between, you know, certain economies. Everybody's feeling the economic, yeah. Yeah. you know, hardships that we're experiencing. Yeah. But I think sometimes it operates under the assumption that things should be cheaper mm -hmm. than what it is. But I think you clarifying that, yeah. listen, just like any place, if you're coming to Accra, cantonments or something like that, uh, the reality, it, it is what it is. It is. It is it's the prime it parts and prime parts of every country has a higher rate right so you have to be careful and another thing also to realize that um, most of the materials that i used to build most of them are imported so yes mm -hmm. we have a lot that we are doing here cement some of the wooden doors and all of that but most of them are imported now if you're buying real estate in a country that produces this you know their costs are less expensive than having to import, yeah, right? Yes. So those have to be factored in there. And that's why sometimes you find that, oh, the price is pegged at the dollar. Pegged. Uh, yes, it's that's something else. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's payable, it's paid to be paid in Ghana cities. Cause yes, this is a country, our currency is Ghana cities. So you, you pay in Ghana cities, you can pay in Ghana cities, but it's pegged at the dollar because the developer has to be very careful because we've had fluctuating rates that if they keep it at Ghana cities and don't peg it, they will end up losing a lot because yeah. they bought and they keep buying like their finishing, their materials, the, the good quality ones. And so they have to peg it at that. And this yeah. is, yeah, and so that is what, why it can compare to. Uh, I, I didn't really realize that until I moved to Ghana because when I first came some years ago, I was like, ah, Masa, why are you charging me USD? <laughs> But right now, if I had real estate property, I would charge people in the U.S. <laughs> only because the, the truth is, from living here, I recognize that, um, number one, everybody hit some economic hardships. Yeah. But because of global markets yeah. and yeah. the dollar, yeah. right, when you look at, even it looks, and as an investor, if I was charging 50,000 Ghana CDs yeah. for a place, yeah. and we look at what happened last year mm -hmm. to the city. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like now it's now five thousand dollars when initially you were thinking it was. And, yeah. and then how can I say to a, you know a tenant, let's say for example the rent is one thousand yeah. Ghana CDs, yeah. but then now the CD has changed exactly. and now I have to go back after exactly. six months to say now it's exactly. going to be ten thousand. Exactly. So what you want to do is because we want to build up the Ghana CD, we want you to charge in Ghana CDs, which I believe is what you say, but it's pegged at the dollar. Yeah. It's like yeah. it's at that rate so that you are not losing, but we are also encouraging the use of the Ghana CD to keep building it up. Yeah. So that's why the government says that we should be. Um, pricing and charging in Ghana cities. So aside from that question, one of the questions I hear a lot is people who are coming to Ghana, maybe not 
interested in investing. They just want to live. Mm. So they find them a nice place to live and then they're shocked mm. because the landlord says, you have to pay me, you know, rent for a year or two years in advance. But then they may have heard somewhere that the law says it's only six months. So here's the question that people ask me a lot that I'm going to ask you. Let's talk about the leasing situation. Okay. Is it one year? Is it two years? Is it six months? What's the deal behind okay. that? Okay. So according to the law, it's six months. This means that no landlord can force you to pay more than six months. That's the law. And any time you feel the need to or you feel that that's being broken, you can report to Rent Act. They do come in. But what happens is that there are certain situations, right? So, you know, it's like the bias power, bargaining power. Mm -hmm. Someone comes in and says that, okay, for me, I'm happy to pay one year, right? I want to pay it off so that I don't spend the money, so that, you know, um, I lock it in. I want to get that off me, so I'd rather pay one year. So in this situation, the landlord may say, okay, you, I'm happy to accept your six months, but hey, here's someone who says he wants to give me one year, two years, because he can, and he wants to, because he doesn't want to end up spending the money. I'd rather go for that. Mm -hmm. So these are the situations that end up coming up, right? But um, be, the law was passed a, a, few, a few years ago, so before then, yes, generally people are doing one year, two years. And this is the one year, two year thing is people then can get enough money to do another investment. So that is why someone would say, okay, if I have six months, and I believe you would do that as well. Like someone came in and said, look, I really don't mind. Like then you cannot force the person. But if someone says, for me, I want to pay one year. I want to put my money in and then know that I'm done, paid for Give me your money. three years, it. five years. You know, if it's all the landlord's card, they may say that I don't want to take more than five years because, you know, I think after two years, you can raise your rent up about 5%. So some of them may not even want to do it after two years because you, you could raise um, wow. their rent uh, yeah, up to 5%. But um, someone came and says, oh, I'm going to give it to you. Well, yeah, you know that, oh, this money will be a good chance to probably invest in another property. So they would more likely go for it. So this is where you may find situations that even though the law says six months, some are still taking that one. But it's all about investigating, right? The person, if the person is forcing you to when they don't, have reason to, then it's against the law. They shouldn't be taking more than six months. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but we know Ghana. <laughs> but, you know, the thing is, when I moved to Ghana, I realized how, why things are the way that they are. And most of it really is because of the economy. Like I said, I go back to last year when the CD depreciated, I think by like 40% or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's yeah, that, that was, that's, that that's, that's mind boggling. Yeah. Like for, for a lot of my folks out there in the U.S., so imagine right now, if you was making a hundred thousand dollars a year, but then at the end of twenty, what twenty two, your hundred thousand was only worth like one or sixty percent. I don't know, sixty thousand. I don't know. Yeah, my math is off, but y'all yeah. the math. <laughs> like that would be outrageous to you. But literally, that is what happened in Ghana. Like the city depreciated by like forty percent. It was crazy. So when you come in, you have to understand that the economy dictates a lot of what you're seeing and a lot of what you're experiencing. The question then becomes, right, outside of like those people ask me all the time, why is real estate so expensive? Um, the whole lease situation is for the average person that's looking for a place to live. The question I get asked a lot is where are the affordable housing? Let's say a crowd outside of a crowd. And then even answering the question, what is typically affordable <laughs> to, let's say, the, the, the middle class, even though. Yeah, and yeah, that's a whole situation. Yeah. But Yeah. Uh, again, affordability is re pretty relative. But yeah, if you're looking at areas that are, when you're comparing the hierarchy, like you want to do middle income. So again, you have these areas that are, uh, for example, Kasua, Weija. These are all areas. And when you go there, they, it's actually, there's a whole mall there, right? There's a Weija mall there. So these areas are all coming up. So you will find that if you are comfortable living there, you will find some good properties there. It's all about also getting a real estate agent who knows these areas well, right? These are the good things about working with the real estate agents. Like they know the areas and they can say, look, I know there's a really good property that you would like that is in this area. So there is, the further away from the prime city, the better the price and the better more room for capital appreciation. So these are some of the areas you want to be looking at. And, but just understand that it's not the prime area. And so, for example, if you want your children to go to school in a prime area, you have to consider that, okay, if I'm going to live here, how long is a drive? Or if your work is over there, you get what I mean? So um, these areas, you can have prices. I mentioned earlier, there was something, was it? Did you, you also said, was it 40000 Yeah, I saw okay. some other development companies that were having properties for around 40000 45000 Yeah, each yeah. Um, I actually saw some when I was searching for a place to rent. Yeah. There were decent houses. Yeah, decent houses. The only yeah. thing was... <laughs> 
the houses were decent and nice, but the routes, the roads yeah. to get the development yeah. was yeah. horrendous. Yeah, so that is it. I, I mean, I, it, it's safe to say Ghana is a developing country, and we need to understand that. So developing countries, thank God that the prime cities are doing well, the roads are coming up, and these areas, East Legon Hills and Oyarifa, I mentioned, all the major roads have been done. And you will find that the major road networks, even to Central Region, Volta Region, these are the Northern Region, they've all been done. But once you get in there, it's the internal routes. And this is where you must understand that and know that it will be done eventually, right? But you just have a yama. Right now, it's not done. Just make sure that you feel secure in the area. But I've known some prime areas that were selling in Accra that the roads were not completely done at the time. But now they've all been done and it's forgotten and passed. So it is important. And I like that we are touching all those points that, yes, these upcoming areas, your internal routes may not be as smooth and as done, but eventually they will be done. And yes, you, you are buying there, you're investing there, and you have room for capital appreciation when these things are done. Listen, this is good info. I, I, want, you, I want you guys to drop uh, a message in the comments. What are some of the other real estate concerns that you have? And we're going to deal with some of those. So write a message right now. We're going to make sure to read it, and we're going to make some videos on those. And I'm going to ask those questions to our luxury, yes, our luxury real estate <laughs> uh, expert right here. Yeah. Until next time, listen, if you love content like this, make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe. Until next time. Thank Peace. you. This video was shot at the Oasis Park Residences, where we are now, built by CPL developers. And we wanted to say a big thank you for the partnership and support. Right, Tim? I will stay in Ghana. Very nice. <laughs>